Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Clay, and I am the Bucks Believer. Tonight, we saw the Milwaukee Bucks absolutely thrash the Minnesota Timberwolves, putting in an excellent offensive effort in which they shot 47.6% from beyond the three-point line, and that led to them running away with a 139-112 to victory. Today's stat of the night has to be Giannis Antetokounmpo's 37 points. He also added eight rebounds and eight assists and shot 13 for 18 from the field in just 29 minutes of play. He got to the line 18 times and, or excuse me, 13 times and knocked in 10 of those free throw attempts, which is always a good sign. Giannis has struggled from the free throw line in the past, but lately he's been shooting it much better, so it was good to see that trend continue, and he also played excellently defensively, padding on two steals and two blocks to his stat total. Overall, he was just not someone that the Minnesota Timberwolves were capable of stopping once he got downhill and into the paint. There was no individual defender on Minnesota who was capable of taking on that matchup, and Giannis really exposed that weakness as time and time again he was able to attack them, get into the lane where he is obviously one of the more effective players as he uh, converts buckets at a very, very high level when he is able to get that close to the rim. I can't even count how many dunks he had in this game. It was probably like six or seven. It felt like he was consistently able to throw down, and a few of them were pretty emphatic rejections, headlined by a dunk over Carl Anthony Towns, uh, in w after which he received a technical foul for staring down Cat. But overall, Giannis was terrific in this game, and his outstanding play needs to be recognized a little bit more, as I think that he's been a little bit further outside of MVP talks than he should be. Don't think he's in the top tier with guys like the Joker or LeBron or Joel Embiid, but I do think that he should be right there in that second tier of contenders. And if he continues to have games like this consistently, well, I do think that a third straight award for him is not something that's impossible of happening. Carl Anthony Towns was also pretty good in this game, the superstar on the other side of the court. He did start to play a little bit less energetically in the second half, but he had a terrific first half in which he piled on 20 points. He finished with 26 and also added 8 rebounds and had a double-double with his 11 assist game. He made a few really nice passes and that's obviously an area in which he's improved as he's become one of the best passers in the entire NBA. Towns was 10 for 19 from the field as well, and he was even more effective than that inside the lane as he did struggle a little bit going just one for six on threes tonight, but he was very much able to win the big man matchup against Brook Lopez, against Bobby Portis, and he was especially able to take advantage of mismatches whenever someone like a Pat Connaughton or a Bryn Forbes was switched on to him and he put those guys either right in the bucket or found a wide open shooter to knock down a look from three. And speaking of wide open shooters, there were two guys on the Timberwolves who I was pretty impressed with in this game. This is only the third time I've seen Minnesota so far this year so I won't pretend like I'm an expert on this team, but I do think that Malik Beasley has had a really nice year from what I've seen. Today was no exception as he put in 26 points on 10 for 16 shooting and made 6 of his 9 threes. He's really become one of the best 3 point shooters in the league and I think that he definitely deserves to be in the most improved player conversation as he has taken huge leaps from where he was last year. I was kind of critical of the contract extension that the Timberwolves gave to him because I thought that they were already a little bit overloaded on the wings. But he has clearly established himself as the best wing player on this team and I think that his deal is probably going to end up being a bit of a bargain for Minnesota as it continues on. I think he's getting paid about 15 million dollars annually. I was also impressed by what I saw from Jalen Noel in this game. Noel is a player who I didn't know a whole lot about other than that he um, was on a two-way deal last season and this year got promoted to the big league team full-time and he's played well in limited minutes so far this year, and tonight against the Bucks, he got a little bit more runtime than I had seen him in the past, and he really took advantage of it, putting in 13 points on 5 for 10 shooting and 3 for 6 from the 3 point line. He genuinely seems to have a really nice shooting stroke, and is someone who I really think is capable of providing some solid bench minutes in an NBA rotation moving forward. 
I think he's going to be able to come off the bench and hit shots. And that is certainly valuable as we're seeing with what Jordan Clarkson is doing in Utah right now. I'm not making a comparison to Clarkson for Noel, but I do think that kind of energetic role-playing guy who can come off the bench and hit some shots is something that he's capable of becoming. And if he can improve his scoring ability off the bounce and his defense, I do think that that is certainly somewhere that uh, Noel could really find a place for himself in the league. Chris Middleton struggled a little bit in this game. I was very disappointed with the fact that he was snubbed from being an all-star reserve. I feel very strongly that a player who is productive enough to average 20 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists, and also efficient enough to do that kind of production on 50, 40, 90 shooting splits, is deserving of making an all-star team. And I feel quite firmly that he should have made it over Julius Randle. But this wasn't Chris's year, and I do think that the slump he's had recently came at the worst time possible. Uh, Chris kind of continued that slump in this game. It had appeared that he may have broken out of it on Sunday against the Kings when he put in 32 points. But today, he regressed back to where he was playing prior to that performance, as he had just 15 points on a very inefficient 6-for-19 shooting. He did shoot the ball all right from 3, as he went 3-for-6 from downtown. But that 3-for-13 shot uh, performance from inside the arc certainly is not good. And it wasn't necessarily that Chris was playing bad. I really liked that he didn't turn the ball over a single time in this game because that's been an area in which he struggled recently. It just really seemed like he wasn't hitting the shots that he usually makes. He was getting to his spots in the mid-range. He looked like he was comfortable out there. They just weren't going in. I'm not used to this kind of play from Chris, as usually he's someone who's very capable of making the shots that he develops for himself, and I'm certainly not going to bank on this continuing, but I hope that he's able to break out of this slump soon, because we know that Chris is capable of playing at a higher level than this, and the Bucks are going to need that from him in order to knock off really good teams as the season goes on. Luckily for Chris, uh, someone else stepped up and took on that scoring load as Bryn Forbes was terrific in this game, powering in 23 points on 8 for 13 shooting. Uh, he was 5 for 9 from the three-point line. Forbes is one of the more fun role players to watch in the entire NBA, in my opinion, although I am a bit biased as a Bucks fan. But when he gets rolling, oh boy does he get rolling. He can get hot in a flash and... He's very confident in his jumper and takes a lot of difficult shots where he's off balance and doesn't have his feet set and he's very capable of making those shots. Sometimes when he puts it up, you are questioning whether or not it's something that he should have done, but then when it rattles in, you're certainly happy with the result. Uh, Bryn Forbes has been a great addition for the Bucks so far this year and I hope that he can continue to shoot the ball as well as he has so far. The Bucks had seven double-digit scorers in this game, and I think that that kind of distribution of the load uh, is something that can really help them win, as in the past they've been a little bit too reliant on Giannis and Chris when it came to go time. Aside from 34, 22, and 7, having big nights for Milwaukee, by that I mean Giannis, Chris, and Bryn, uh, Dante DiVincenzo added 13 points, Brooke Lopez added 15 points, Bobby Portis scored 14 points, and DJ Augustine had 10 points and 5 assists on 4 for 6 shooting and was 2 for 4 from the 3 point line. Augustine is someone that I want to dive into a little bit further here as he has struggled a lot for the Bucks so far this year, but in tonight's game, we got a bit more of what I think the front office was looking for when they signed him to a 3 year $21 million deal in free agency. That 10 points and 5 assists is right around the sweet spot of where he needs to be coming off the bench for the Bucks. although he did start this game. It was his third straight sp start in Drew Holiday's absence. But this kind of production is definitely good for Milwaukee, as DJ did a really nice job of running the pick and roll. He found both Brooke Lopez rolling to the basket, as well as Giannis Antetokounmpo rolling to the basket on a couple of occasions. And he also was able to score out of that in the mid-range, he made two of his four three-point attempts, and I think both of them were catch-and-shoot looks. So this play from DJ is certainly promising, and I hope that he can keep it up as the Bucks had some pretty high expectations for him as a quality bench role player when they signed him in this offseason. 
One last thing I want to touch on here was the play of Anthony Edwards. Edwards was the number one overall pick for the Timberwolves in this past year's NBA draft and I was not at all blown away with what I saw from him. There were flashes and plays in which I was intrigued because he is just so athletic and so strong, and there's all kinds of potential here for him to really become one of the better scoring wings in the league. But there's just so many ill-advised shots and poor decisions, and that really showed in today's box score as he went just 3 for 13 from the field, although he did make all three, or excuse me, all three of his buckets came on three-pointers as he was three for eight from beyond the arc. And he also turned the ball over four times. Edwards has all the potential in the world, and he's still a rookie, so I shouldn't be making too many judgments off of him just based off this. But there certainly is a long way to go in his development, and I hope that we can see him improve in those intangible areas of decision-making and taking care of the ball that he certainly needs to improve at. Uh, overall, I think that I covered everything that I wanted to cover on this game. Just a really solid win for the Bucks, in which they were super hot offensively and took advantage of a foe that was not quite capable of shutting them down on that end of the court. Uh, let me know what your thoughts were in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and if you are a fan of all things Bucks, then go ahead and subscribe. This is the place for you. I think that's going to be it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you all again very soon.